All right, so we ended our last video with the image of a glass that had a bag of tea inside of it like this. And we said that the quality of the tea that would be produced was ultimately very dependent on the leaves that were in that bag. So the flavor and the, and the, the caffeination and the aroma, all of that was determined by whatever type of leaves we put in the bag of tea. And we described that as being very similar to our genes and how our genes determine our our ultimate behavior. Uh, but that's not the, the leaves aren't the only thing that factor into the quality of that overall tea. We described also the hot water because the hot water is going to pull out that flavor and it's going to pull out that caffeine and it's going to pull out that aroma and ultimately contribute to the overall quality of the tea. And so we, we use this image to relate to the genetic and the environmental components of behavior and we introduced how challenging of a concept it is separating the environmental and the genetic com uh, components. And so in order to tease apart the effects of our genes and our environment, um, as overall determinants of our behavior. Behavioral geneticists attempt to construct experiments that are going to limit the number of variables because like any experiment, what we really want to do is, is limit the number of questions that we're asking to one so that we can get a real true and, and verifiable answer. So we need an experiment that can control for genes while allowing the environment to be varied and then alternatively, so Alternatively, we need an experiment that can control for the environment while allowing the genes to be varied. And in that way, hopefully, um, we'd be able to kind of tease apart these effects. And so nature has actually conveniently um, set up uh, some pretty good studies that help us to control for these. And, and uh, the first one we're going to talk about are twin studies. So before we move forward with twin studies, I really need to clarify the difference between um, uh, uh, between two of the types of twins because one is going to be really beneficial to us and one is going to be um, slightly less beneficial. With the two different types of twins, I'll need two different um, ladies. Um, and so this lady will have uh, straight hair and this lady will have curly hair. And I realize that these are about the least flattering portrayals of pregnant women ever. But the first type of twins that we're going to talk about are fraternal twins. And with fraternal twins, what we're, what's happening is that we have two eggs that have been ovulated, two eggs that have been released um, by this lady. And so two individual sperms fertilize those eggs. So you have maybe this orange sperm and then you have a blue sperm come in and so you'd have this blue baby from the from the blue sperm and you'd have the orange baby from the orange sperm um, but what you see is that even though these babies are going to be born at the same time and they're going to be exactly you know the same age and everything uh, genetically they are not identical so they're not going to control perfectly for the genes which is what we want and so the other type of twins those are identical twins and those are going to be the twins that look alike um, that you may uh, see in your in your communities. But those are identical twins and so in this case you have one egg and it's being fertilized by one sperm. We'll, we'll use a green sperm and what's happening is that egg is actually splitting into into two. So what you have is you have two babies that are in the in the same womb, two babies being carried in the same pregnancy, and they are genetically identical. So these will be our green babies, and these are genetically identical. And so what this setup with the identical twins allows us to do is it allows us to assume that our genes are controlled. And we can also assume that our environment is varied. The general thought is that you, you take a set of identical twins and you look for shared interesting traits, especially those that play into behavior like personality or temperament or, or athleticism. And we kind of assume that their environments are different because, you know, they breathe different air and they walk on different parts of the road and they get sneezed on unequally, um, etc. And if we determine that the traits that we're interested in show a high degree of similarity 
between these twins, especially compared to maybe non-twin siblings, then we can assume that that similarity is attributed to the shared genes. And thus, uh, that the traits that we were looking at are highly influenced by genes. And you know, this seems like a pretty good experiment because our genes are controlled for and we're we're varying the environment, but critics actually um, have a lot to say about these experiments and they have a lot of questions because they're, they're concerned about exactly how varied these environments actually are. Maybe identical twins act really similarly athletically because they've played on all of the same teams and they wear the same uniforms and all of their teammates and coaches treat them the exact same or maybe they have very similar personalities because they're dressed the same every day in school so people treat them really similarly and so you, you get a high degree of criticism with these twin studies but uh, nature is not without another nice provision and a nice response to this criticism and that comes in the form of separated twin studies. And so what that describes is is maybe these twins actually get separated at birth and they get raised in completely different environments. And you might think this sounds um, really similar to a, to a pretty popular movie, Parent Trap, with Lindsay Lohan, and and I, uh, you know, that was a remake of a of an original Parent Trap, where maybe these twins are separated at birth, and in the movie, one grows up in America, I believe, in California, and one the other one grows up in England. And so, what that allows us to do is we're still assuming. That, uh, that the genes are controlled because genetically these, these two human beings are identical. But now even more so we can assume that this environment is actually varied. And so we run uh, really similar experiments where uh, after years of separation these twins are brought back together and we compare and contrast different traits and we look for similarities. So maybe a population of separated twins have a higher degree of similarity in the professions that they choose or the spouses that they choose or even maybe how they've raised their children. But as these studies were done and as the results kind of came in and people were initially overwhelmed and, and really impressed. Criticism, ag again, kind of um, started poking into these studies and they started questioning, you know, exactly how varied was the environment? If both of these twins, say, were raised um, in Western cultures, um, maybe those environments were too similar to actually um, not influence their personalities. Or And then another criticism looks at when these twins actually were reunited because if they were reunited a year or two before the study was done maybe their similarities are just really exaggerated because they after being separated came back into each other's lives and wanted to spend all of their time together etc but critics just aren't really impressed with how varied these environments were but in the field of behavioral genetics another really interesting set of studies started to emerge um, where we tried to really just flip this whole model. So, and so how this works is we take a we take a family here, and I'll draw them in pink. And so that's the father and the mother. And what we'll do is we'll put a completely biologically unrelated child in their family. This little blue child. And so now, um, alternatively to the other studies, what we can assume is that the environment is really similar. All of these people are going to grow up in the same household. Um, and what we're able to do now is we can vary the genes. And you might see that this is set up for perfectly in adoption. And so what we can do is we can look at the traits of this little blue child here that we're really interested in and we can examine them as um, he or she grows up and we can compare those traits to the parents in pink that reared him and that raised him and we can compare those traits to his uh, to his biological parents the blue parents that are no longer in his his upbringing and we can look to see if those traits are more similar to his biological parents or more similar to these adoptive parents so maybe he is super athletic despite these pink parents having no athletic skill and, and not being a very interested family in athletics, 
um, and we look and see, oh my gosh, his his blue biological parents were uh, track stars in college. Or we might say that you know he's he's extremely shy, uh, even though he's in a really really uh, vivacious and outgoing family. Um, and we look at his parents, and his his biological parents were also really shy. And so we say, oh man, maybe those those traits have a high degree of genetic determination to them. And and so one area that we saw these results become sort of concrete was looking at schizophrenia, because psychologists had already determined that if your parents had schizophrenia, that you had an increased likelihood of developing schizophrenia. So we took children, and we looked at children who whose Uh, biological parents had schizophrenia but were raised in an adopted family and we looked to see if they still had increased likelihood of schizophrenia and and lo and behold they did and so that allowed us to determine that you know schizophrenia really does have a high degree of genetic determination to it and so um, there are criticisms of all of these studies twin studies and separated twin studies and adoption studies but combined, they start to give us a really clear picture of, of what degree of, of the variability in personality and in behavior is ultimately determined by our genetic versus environmental determination.